All right, my third time out to fix this hot water heater, it ended up being the gas control valve was faulty. Now this hot water heater is less than one year old and the manufacturer said that they had faulty gas control valves. Now this is a ream gas hot water heater. So if you have one of those and it's not staying lit, it might wanna call the manufacturer with your serial number and see if it is a faulty control valve. So you've seen I shut the water off, then I shut the gas off, then I hook up the hose and start getting that draining. You've seen the hose was dripping, it needed a rubber washer, which I ended up getting putting in there and stop the dripping so I can drain it. And then as it's draining, you want to take the rest of this apart, the gas line off, uh, take the thermal couple off, the uh, gas line to the burner off and the pilot, and then take the wire for the sparker off. Then you're going to unscrew the four screws that hold this whole assembly in and take the assembly out. Now you absolutely don't have to take this out but if you don't take it out, just make sure you're not going to drip any water or anything down in any of the tubes. So then the best practice here is to get a half inch piece of pipe and screw it in so you just can unscrew the whole valve that way. And I showed you the adapter that was in there had um, Teflon tape on both sides of it. It should not be on both sides. It should only be on the side that goes into the fixture. The other side is a press fitting and there should not be Teflon tape, uh, you know, or, uh, you know, the pipe dope or anything on it. Uh, so here we go. That's why I connected that half inch pipe so I could just use my hands to unscrew this. So you see that did not look very old at all because it is less than one year's uh, worth of use on it. Now I'm going to take some pipe thread compound and put it around here. It came pre-done with the Teflon tape on it. I'm just using a little tiny bit of this pipe thread compound on here uh, just, just for insurance, just so it, I have no worries about it leaking. Now I went and made sure the threads were good that it was going into. There was a tiny little bit of debris in there that came out when I took the old one out. So I just cleaned that out, you know, so I get a good seal. Now here's what I'm talking about. If you're going to put some either some pipe thread compound or Teflon tape or both. If you use Teflon tape, make sure it's the gas kind, the kind made specifically for gas. Uh, and make sure you use it the way it says. And also with the Teflon tape, uh, I mean with the compound, I use both. I think using both is a little bit of insurance here. So I used both. Then you get that and screw it in there. And you're going to use your adjustable open end wrench or crescent wrench, however you want to call it. Now, mine actually broke while I was there. So I ended up using my channel locks uh, anyways. So, but, you know, just the channel locks kind of leave marks on everything. So, uh, you know, I just don't like to use them when I don't have to. Now I turn the gas on and then I use my nose to see if there's any gas leaking. I do have a gas leak detector that I'll uh, get out later. And also um, you can use the soap kind, which is what I use here. I actually have you know one of those sniffers as well, but I didn't bring that. So I just use the soap that you'll see. So then you put the uh, whole burner assembly in, screwed in and Now usually they fit in a very specific way. So make sure you put it in there properly so the burner's sitting the way it's supposed to. And then we're just going to connect the all the uh, connections here. We're going to connect the pilot and then the gas line and then the thermal couple and then last the sparker wire. Now the thermal couple nut, for whatever reason, I always have the hardest time getting it started. It always feels like it wants to go in there cross-threaded. It, it is very fine threads, uh, so it takes me a little bit to get it in there. So this is the uh, leak detector, and you put it on there. And it's basically just dish soap and a little bit of water. Um, but, you know, you put it on there and if it bubbles up, you'll know. Uh, you, you know, people wonder, is, is that a bubble or not? You'll know. It'll, it'll bubble up a lot. Uh, so then you put the control valve on pilot. You know, make sure you have your gas turned on. And then you hit the spark. You've seen the sparker click a couple times there. And then the pilot light. And usually you have to hold it for about 30 seconds up to about one minute. And then you can let go. And then there you go, I got it lit. And before it was not even staying lit, I guess the tenant took and relit it uh, 
for the previous two days he relit it three or four times and it would stay on for a tiny bit of time and then go out uh, so this was done uh, by the time i post this video about three weeks ago and it still is running good so if you have a ream gas hot water heater and the pilot's not staying on give them a call and check and see with your model number there if you have one of the models that may have this bad gas control valve and then see i'm just getting everything buttoned up here now i do have the videos for cleaning the thermocouple and replacing the thermocouple if you want to check those out they're on my channel thanks for watching i appreciate it have a good day